you could turn the clock back to 1850, you would see men dressed much like I am, which is the subject of a book that I've written called Oxford Class of 1850. I'm standing in front of one of the houses, private homes of Oxford, Maryland, called the Academy House, which was built in 1848. It was originally built as the officers' quarters for the Maryland Military Academy. In 1850, there were 33 cadets here under the command of Brigadier General Tench Tillman. The book, Oxford Class of 1850, tells the story of what happened to these 33 cadets. Because of the education they received here at Oxford, four became doctors. One sat on the board of directors of Johns Hopkins Hospital. One founded Columbia University, and 18 went into military service in the Civil War, fighting on both sides of the conflict. Two of the most notable were Osmond Latrobe, which became General Longstreet's aide-de-camp, and William Sidney Winder, who built Andersonville Prison in the South. Be sure to visit the Oxford Museum across from the town park to see the artifacts, not just from the Maryland Military Academy, but from the 325 plus years that Oxford has been in existence. Be sure to pick up a walking tour brochure at the museum where you can walk the streets to get the flavor and history that this small gem on the Treadavon River has to offer you. St. Michael's Museum at St. Mary's Square is located on Chestnut Street, just one short block from Talbot Street. To learn more, ask inside for a free walking tour map of historic St. Michael's. Forty years after he had left here under arrest for his first attempt to escape from slavery, Frederick Douglass came back and met with his former owner, Thomas, Captain Thomas Auld, uh, who was at this house uh, living here with his daughter and son-in-law. The meeting was brief but very cordial, and uh, the two were able to re really reconcile uh, during their visit. He says, he was to me no longer a slaveholder, either in fact or in spirit, and I regarded him as I did myself, a victim of the circumstances of birth, education, law, and custom. The museum itself consists of three restored buildings from the mid-1800s. The Jeremiah Sewell House was a working man's residence and the home of a family of six. A recent addition to the museum is the Cheney House. It was built about 1850 as a residence for three free black American brothers. Now we are in the parlor of the Sewell House. This is the oldest part of the structure and you'll notice the massive timbers. They were from a mill that was torn down in 1840 and its timbers used in other buildings. The Teetotum Building was a commercial structure used in the past for many purposes. The exhibit in this corner, we also have material on the War of 1812 and on the Battle of St. Michael's in 1813. If you come in, you can see a diorama of that battle and listen to a recording of the action from the British point of view. the Battle of St. Michael's took place on August 10, 1813, when the British moved up the Miles River to assault a battery at the mouth of the town of the harbor of St. Michael's at Parrot's Point. The townspeople had been alerted to the potential British advance and had assembled the militia. There were some 500 troops in town at the time. A small number of them were in the battery on Parrot's Point under the command of Lieutenant Dodson. The British approached the battery under cover of early morning darkness. The defenders fired one cannon and then skedaddled. The British advanced on the battery, came in, spiked the cannon so as to make them useless, returned to their boats back out on the river, and cannonaded the town. A few houses in the town were pierced. For the most part, the British seemed to have overshot the town. According to one legend, uh, the uh, townspeople placed lanterns in the masts of ships in the tops of trees so as to make the town look as if it were on the bluff. Uh, and 
may have, in fact, uh, if that is true, saved the town from more serious damage. The British then re returned up to Kent Island, and both sides claimed victory in the fight. Uh, the townspeople for having saved their shipyards and their town from more serious damage. The British for having neutralized the battery that was their objective. Everybody was happy, a real rare instance in war. You're watching Maryland's Eastern Shore Hotel Channel, part of the Visitors TV Network. For more information on anything you've seen on this program, visit our website, visitorstvnetwork.com, where you can view all of the video for this city as well as all of the other cities in our network and link directly to the attraction's website and get more information such as the restaurant menus, the local weather forecast, calendar of events, and directions from your hotel. All this and more at visitorstvnetwork.com. Make the Chesapeake part of your story by visiting the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum in beautiful St. Michael's, Maryland. You'll take home an authentic experience of rich history and a rewardingly good time. Watch shipwrights restoring and maintaining the largest fleet of Chesapeake boats. Climb to the top of the 1879 Hooper Strait Lighthouse and learn about the life of a lighthouse keeper. Stroll the living shoreline to Waterman's Wharf where you can pull up a crab or eel pot and try tonging for oysters. You might even find yourself aboard a real skipjack, watching a log canoe race in one of our exhibits, or out on the Miles River for a scenic cruise aboard Mr. Jim. There's engaging art exhibits, waterfowling displays, and more Chesapeake history than in any other place in the world, all waiting for you to make the Chesapeake part of your story at the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum in St. Michael's, Maryland. For more information, visit cbmm.org or find us on Facebook. I've been a full-time artist since 1972. I've uh, spent my life on the water, enjoying all the uh, natural history of it, the birds, the animals, the fish, uh, the boats, the beautiful homes, and uh, I specialize in painting all those on charts. I think it's a man thing, maybe, that, you know, that we all like uh, charts and maps. It's, it gives us a sense of place, and that adds another dimension to the artwork that I do. I specialize in Chesapeake Bay Area, but I can do uh, any image you want on any chart anywhere in the world. Prices start at $195, depending on how custom you'd like your map or chart. Visit me at my website, www.themapguide.com, or call me at 413-527-8557, and we can discuss the project. Visiting Easton Town Center is wonderful. It's so historic. It's like stepping back in time, except when it comes time for shopping. You can find everything here. You can find the finest Irish imports, hand-knit sweaters, tweed caps, jewelry, music, art, and more at Irish Traditions. Fine shotguns from Cesar Guarini, Benelli, Beretta, collectible firearms from Parker, Foxes, L.C. Smiths, English Doubles, hunting and shooting supplies at Albright's Gun Shop. Overlooking the Tredavon River on Maryland's eastern shore is Riverhouse Golf, a beautifully maintained 18-hole championship par 71 golf course with a challenging island green, dramatic waterscapes, and lush rolling fairways. The greens at Easton Club's Chef creates food using fresh local ingredients from eastern shore farms and waterways. The River House is also the perfect waterfront venue for your wedding ceremony and reception. Call today for a reservation. Log canoe racing is a great team effort, and unless you have a particularly dedicated, skilled, strong, courageous, uh, sharp crew, you're going to have problems. These boats were originally used as work boats. They were the pickup truck of the bay. They were used for fishing and crabbing and oyster tonging. And of course, as work boats, they had much, much smaller rigs than you see today. As sailors will, the, the watermen would frequently race one another back home. And uh, legend has it that the first boat in got a better price than the later boat. 
Crab Claw Restaurant, located on the waterfront in downtown St. Michael's. It's a family-owned business. It's been in St. Michael's for over 33 years. We're open seven days a week, March through December. Our menu consists of delicious crab cake, shrimp, oysters, clams, specialty fish, as well as the Maryland steamed blue crabs. We have a nice filet mignon and chicken dishes for the land lover. You may arrive by car or boat. We have two-hour dockage while dining and ample parking. So please include us while visiting Talbot County. In fact, is something happened before 1888 to make it possible to catch more oysters. And you're sitting on it, the skipjack. The skipjack was so cheap to build that they built about 800 of them very quickly and it tripled the number of boats harvesting oysters, which tripled the volume of what they could catch from 5 million to 15 million. I'm Captain Ed Farley with the Skipjack H.M. Krentz, and we really enjoy taking people out to share a little bit of the lore, the history, the ecology of the Chesapeake Bay, teaching them about the way of the watermen, catching oysters, we'll catch oysters and show you all about that. We sail from the Crab Claw Restaurant in St. Michael's, Maryland, and to contact us, you call 410-745-6080 or get on the internet and dial in www.oystercatcher.com and you'll be able to get all the information. We sail three times a day at 11, 2 and a nice sunset trip like this evening. It's been a beautiful breeze and we wish you could have been aboard to join us. The age-old way of catching oysters here in the Chesapeake Bay were by, is by tongs. And uh, they say the Indians called them that way and they're still using them. And uh, uh, it seems like to be a, a good way to catch them because that way you never deplete the uh, oyster beds. Uh, they, they make a living uh, and it's, it's the hardcore people that do that. The watermen are hardcore. They have to face the elements. They go out when it's freezing and blowing and snowing. And uh, that's the time that the oysters bring the most money. In the winter, everybody wants to eat oysters in the winter, so you have to gather them when you can. They use the tongs, it's like two sticks, and they're crossed in the middle, and they have a rake on each end, and they pull them together like that, and then they lift them up on the boat, and dump them on the boat, and then they have to cull through them. Uh, it's, it's, it's a hard way to make a living, really hard. I heard one guy say, anybody said he likes doing that is a liar, but, <laughs> but it is a really hard way to make a living, but it, it, it it's, uh, people do make a living, they make very good livings out of it. Uh, and it, also there's another way called patent tong, and that is limited to the Bay Area. That is a hydraulic, great big rig of hydraulic, and, and you drop it in the water, and then you pull your lever of the hydraulics, pulls them together, and it brings the, a, a lot of oysters up and dumps it like that. There's a few people do, that do that, not a lot of people. Most people do by hand tongs. There's also another way to skipjacks, the dredge boats. Uh, they have to dredge by sail four days a week. Monday and Tuesday they can use power and uh, they, on those days they catch more oysters but at, on the skipjacks they drag their dredges behind them and drag over the bottom for a half a mile at a time and when they pull it up it's full, full of real big beautiful oysters and they dump it on the deck. Capture the spirit of Delmarva. Mark your calendar for America's premier fine art and sportsman's expo at the Waterfowl Festival in Easton, happening the second weekend of November. During hundreds of artists, craftsmen, and dealers, Maryland wine tasting, thousands of antique and contemporary decoys, retriever, fly fishing, and dock dog demos, pavilions for sportsmen, plus world-class calling contests, after-hours concerts, and great Eastern Shore food. Tickets and info at waterfowlfestival.org. To everything, there is a season. In Talbot County, your season is now. Earth. Wind. Fire. 
and water. With 602 miles of waterfront, coves, rivers, and bays to explore, little wonder that Talbot Kelly is known as the Hamptons of the Chesapeake Bay. Summer, winter, spring, and fall. Movies are made here. Wedding Crashers, Failure to launch. Memories are created here too. Come for a world-class wedding or pamper yourself at a world-class spa. Isn't it time you let Talbot County views erase your tension? Is dining your thing? You'll find restaurants with four stars, restaurants under the stars, and restaurant patrons with stars in their eyes. Whatever your taste, there's a table with your name on it. Are you a savvy shopper? Stroll through sophisticated shops from chic to unique. Is it art you like? The art scene is booming. Talbot County attracts artists from all over the world. History is a passion. Talbot County is rich in history, and a wealth of museums encourages you to look and learn. Do you love the outdoors? Golf Emerald Green Fairways. Catch them your way. Jump a skipjack. Go on horseback. A bicycle built for two. The Oxford Bellevue Ferry is waiting for you. It doesn't matter how, whatever your reason, whatever the season, your time for Talbot County is now. For more information on Talbot County's small towns and villages of Oxford, St. Michael's, Tillman Island, and Easton, Maryland, call 410-770-8000 or visit tourtalbot.org. Come to Italy without ever leaving Easton. Portofino is a small town in the northern Riviera and we're known for our hospitality. At Portofino Ristorante Italiano, you can enjoy a casually elegant dining experience Italian style. Start off with a cocktail or perhaps a glass of wine. From our selection of wines from Italy, New Zealand and California, we feature homemade pastas and sauces such as gnocchi al pesto, penne fra diavolo and lasagna. In addition, Portofino offers traditional regional specialties including pollo alla inverno, risotto and of course our signature dish, zuppa di pesce alla Portofino. Complete your meal with something sweet such as tiramisu or cannoli. We are here to make it certain that you feel welcome. Ciao, buon appetito, a presto. When the customer comes to uh, Monster Racing, he's really getting a unique, legitimate experience. Um, he's driving on a track that hosts two major NASCAR events per year. He's driving cars that were actually driven by um, drivers that are NASCAR heroes in some case. And um, he gets the he gets through the real thing. He gets the real deal when he drives around the speedway. Life in Easton will wonder no more. Easton is packed with fun things to do. We've got comedians, shows, live music, bowling in the dark. Trust me, we've got a lot of hot things going on here in Easton. Let's go check some out. The Avalon has everything from symphony to bluegrass, comedians to art festivals. 
festivals and they've just put in a brand new listening room upstairs with additional shows, check out their website at avalontheater.com for showtime and ticket information. When you're ready to really rock, you've got to try Extreme Bow at Easton Bow's Good Time Charlie's. They serve beer and wine as well as some great burgers, subs, and pizza. Bow in the dark with great music and pulsating lights. Two and a half hours unlimited. The three of us are, were painters, professional painters and artists in our own right, and we got together in 1997 and opened the Troika Gallery. The cool thing is that the, name, the word Troika is Greek and it means a committee of three that represents the finest of fine art. I've been painting all of my life, but professionally for the last uh, 21 years, since 88, uh, professional portraits, working in pastel, as you see the gentleman here in the red shirt is a pastel, as well as oil. Three of us owners paint in the back room of the Troika Gallery, and you can watch us create a commissioned portrait right before your eyes. I just used to paint all boats and dogs and uh, houses and things, but I just came to portraits and fell in love with them. Like each one I do, uh, I spend two or three months on a portrait and I fall in love with that person in lots of different ways. And so that's why I love to paint. Actually, I've been an artist all of my life, and I think probably most artists will say that. My career led from being a commercial artist doing illustrations, but I think probably while I was being an illustrator, that's when I fell in love with the figure. And over the years, uh, it's developed that I really have a passion for doing portraits. In oil and watercolor. And what excites me the most is when the client comes in and looks at the portrait and I see that glint in their eye that says, she's got it. Okay, now you're going to see a great transformation. Here is the subject. Here is the finished portrait of the subject. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Brownowell, director of the Academy Art Museum here in Easton. This area has attracted artists for generations. Uh, it took its rightful position as the cultural capital of the Eastern Shore with the establishment of this institution in 1958. We hope on your visit here you take the time to visit our many galleries. A popular art activity is our first Friday gallery walk when galleries are open from 5 to 9 p.m. and offer refreshments, special exhibits, music and fun. In July, our annual plein air competition attracts top talents and offers the visitor a chance to see many paintings created in the streets of Easton. There are a number of great galleries here in the downtown area you'll want to explore, each with their own specialty, such as Grafton Galleries, home base of David Grafton, who is known for his personal interpretation of the American landscape. For the collector, stop in and pick out a painting of your choice or commission a landscape. Grafton Galleries, Grafton Arts, Com. The River House is the perfect waterfront venue for your wedding ceremony and reception. Overlooking the Tread Avon River on Maryland's beautiful eastern shore, chefs can tailor a menu to match your dreams with cuisine that is fresh, local, and homemade. The setting is on a beautifully maintained 18-hole championship golf course with stately trees, dramatic waterscapes, rolling fairways. Call for a reservation today. But a lot of people don't think of Marsh as a, a beautiful place. And one of the things perhaps you should do the next time you go around close to a marsh is maybe you look a little closer. One of the things the marsh will show you is some beautiful flowers. AJ and I came up with an idea of doing a book that nobody else had done on Chesapeake Bay or all along the Atlantic coast, as a matter of fact. So in 1984, we set about writing a book called Life in the Chesapeake Bay. It's about all of the animals and plants, the birds that fly around it, the trees that make their living on the shoreline. The book is an ideal guide for travelers who are coming to the Eastern Shore. Now we've just published our third edition and uh, we've improved it. We have probably 60 or 70 more species uh, beyond the first and second edition and we now have beautiful colored digital photographs uh, sprinkled in throughout the book. Sometimes when traveling, you experience the unexpected. But should you or your family have an unanticipated health problem, you can rest easy. As a visitor to the Eastern Shore, you have access to exceptional health care at Shore Health System. 
From the smallest to the most extreme medical needs, for major illness and injuries, the newly constructed 24-7 Emergency Department at Memorial Hospital in Easton is a state-of-the-art facility with spacious private rooms, a comfortable space for visiting family, and efficient work areas for our highly skilled nurses and physicians. For minor medical needs, Express Care, located right next door, provides convenient walk-in services and is open seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. You and your family also have access to the nation's only shock trauma center through Shore's partnership with the University of Maryland Medical System. So relax and have peace of mind, and should a medical need arise, we've got you covered. Introducing Good Time Charlie's at Easton Bowling Center, a rockin' atmosphere with food, games, and of course, fun. Good Time Charlie's has a full menu of food, drinks, and desserts for you to enjoy, plus free wireless internet. Good Time Charlie's is all new with video screens, music, new decor, and more. Food, drinks, games, and of course, bowling. Good Time Charlie's at Easton Bowling Center. Get in on the fun. My uh, paternal grandfather was a schooner captain, and he was freighting out of Baltimore as a young man in the late 1800s, and he uh, came in here due to a storm in the harbor down here, and while he was waiting for the storm to abate, uh, he met my grandmother, and uh, he fell in love with my mother, and uh, he decided he liked the place, so he built a home here and he raised his family of about 12 children. When I came along, my father was in building boats. He was working for the renowned boat builder, Mr. John B. Harrison. I became enthused and picked up and started doing little jobs around here, and I decided to build boats temporarily. And this has been a temporary job for me. Uh, since 1947. I'm going to measure this. I got a measure piece of wood that goes in here as 28 and 5 eighths inches. My name is Mike Kamenskis. I'm the golf professional and golf course manager at Hogdeck Golf Course. I'd like to invite everybody to come out to play. We've got a fantastic 18-hole par 72 championship golf course, rated four stars and top 25 public golf courses in the nation by Golf Digest magazine. We also have a par 32 executive golf course for all ability levels, along with our great practice areas, a chipping green, putting green, driving range, and a fully stocked golf shop for all your golfing needs. We'd like everybody to come out and see us here at Hogneck. For a tee time, please give us a call, 410-822-6079. Encounter the delectable food and wine of Scossa Restaurant and Lounge, where you will savor the classic Northern Italian cuisine created by chef Giancarlo Tondin. With an emphasis on quality, only the freshest ingredients are selected to create cuisine that reinvigorates traditional Italian recipes. Experience the sophisticated, chic decor and lively ambiance of the Scossa dining room, bar and lounge, or dine al fresco at the Scossa cafe, and enjoy the picturesque charm of Eastern historic town center. Why coat and tie are not required, attractive attire will fit perfectly 
with the cosmopolitan style at Scossa. Now that you're enjoying Maryland, its historic small town charm, big city elegance, unmatched beauty of the Chesapeake Bay, majestic mountains in the west, history in the cradle of America's birth, why not bring it home with you throughout the year? Discover Maryland Life. Subscribe today. The magazine that celebrates Maryland in pictures and stories all year long. America in miniature. Delivered six times a year to your home. Only $14.95. Call us toll free or visit us online. 800-357-9554. MarylandLife.com. Subscribe today and escape for an entire year. Only $14.95. 800-357-9554. MarylandLife.com. Dorchester County's history was shaped by its isolation from the rest of the world. The waters of the Chesapeake Bay, Choptank, and Nanticoke Rivers produced food for the Indians and colonists of this beautiful country. Its historic contribution was by no means insignificant. William Halleck, a native of Dorchester, commanded the Wasp, one of the first two ships of the Continental Navy, and John Tripp, another native, was one of the heroes of the War of Tripoli. Four U.S. Navy ships were named in his honor. His uncle, Captain Edward Tripp, constructed the first steamboat on the Chesapeake Bay in 1813. While Dorchester County records no great battles of the Civil War, it was the center of conflict of the Oyster Wars. Following the Civil War, fierce battles emerged between the states of Maryland and Virginia over the harvesting of the Bay's abundant oysters. Watermen fought hand-to-hand -hand with shotguns and rifles and used their boats as ramming devices. The battle continued through the early 20th century between the watermen and Maryland Fisheries Police armed with water-cooled machine guns. There are many Dorchester natives who made international contributions, including Harriet Tubman. Annie Oakley liked the area so well she built a home here. You'll find more information at the Brannock Maritime Museum, where there's an astonishing archive of naval and Chesapeake Bay history, surveys and documents including over 8,000 photographs. Hi, I'm Connie Tubman. Welcome to Bay Country Shop. We have hand-carved decoys, waterfowl, and skipjacks, all done by local artists. We have original paintings and prints of the Eastern Shore, hand-painted and embroidery clothing. We also have books about Dorchester County and many gift items local to the area, including jewelry. We have a lot of horse and dog items and timeless clothing. Everyone who works here is family, and we all do the buying. We look forward to seeing you. We're standing in an area known as Long Wharf, the perfect place to start a walking tour of historic Cambridge. Cambridge, one of the oldest cities in the state of Maryland, was settled in 1684. The Stone Fountain is a memorial to the residents who lost their lives in World War I. It is operational during the warm weather months. Behind the fountain, you'll find the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial, a false smokestack that was used aboard the presidential yacht as an elevator for the president. We're here in downtown Cambridge, which has a very interesting background. As Cambridge developed into a thriving seaport community in the 1700s, it attracted many merchants to downtown. Ray Street became the center of a thriving business district until its decline in the 60s and 70s to shopping centers. The new century brought a revitalization to downtown, with enthusiastic shop owners restoring the buildings back to its original historic integrity. You can witness this revitalization for yourself as you browse through many independently owned shops. You can find just about anything here. You can find... This is Joie de Vivre Gallery. We have fine art, pottery, sculptures, designer jewelry, wearable art with a high concentration on American artists. Chocolates, cheeses, wines, and brown paper packages tied up with string. Here are a few of my favorite things in beautiful downtown Cambridge. Long Wharf meets historic High Street, a brick paved, tree lined street, home to many 18th and 19th century dwellings, some that were actually moved to this location from across the bay. A historic walking tour brochure is available at the Visitor Center to describe the many homes in detail. Along historic High Street is the Dorchester Art Center, open 10 to 2 Monday through Saturday. The Art Center is a gallery for local artists and features changing exhibitions throughout the year. Situated on the corner of Church and High Streets is Christ Church. Originally built in 1693 and rebuilt a final time in 1883, 
it is an excellent example of American Gothic Revival architecture. Many noteworthy graves, including early settlers, revolutionary and Civil War heroes, and five Maryland governors are located behind the brick-walled fence. A court was established in Cambridge about 1695. The building was destroyed by fire, and this one was designed and built in 1770. Dorchester County is also home to the Richardson Maritime Museum, dedicated to the shipbuilding trade of the area, as well as master shipbuilder James B. Richardson. The museum features the rich heritage of the waterways of Dorchester County and includes a model of the Nathan of Dorchester, an authentic skipjack built by local volunteers to preserve the technique of wooden boat building. The Dorchester County Historical Society at 902 LaGrange Avenue features an exhibit on seven Maryland governors and 19th century transportation exhibits. Harriet Tubman, often called the Moses of her people because of her work in the Underground Railroad freeing slaves, was born in Dorchester County in an area called Bucktown. A slave herself, Harriet ran away only to return to Delmarva 19 times to free 300 others. During the Civil War, she served the Union Army as nurse, scout, and spy. The Spokot Windmill Complex, located seven miles west of Cambridge, is the only fully operational English-style post windmill in Maryland. Once a self-contained community, Spokot today has the only existing post windmill for grinding grain in Maryland. Also on the property is a tenant farmhouse, a one-room schoolhouse, built in 1870. Under fair winds, the mill is still operated from time to time. Dorchester County is the largest county in the state of Maryland. Included in the county are Hooper Island, Taylor Island, and Elliott Island. These areas are well known for their seafood trade. Many families still make their living on the waterways of Dorchester County. You could plan a drive to one of these islands near the day's end for a memorable ride along ribbons of road winding through marshlands and water, sets that surround you in breathtaking color. As you make your way around the county, you'll pass through many small communities and quaint villages such as Vienna, one of the oldest settlements in the county. Located on the Nanticoke River, it has its original customs house, a new waterfront park, and boardwalk along the river. East Newmarket is a town which was entered in its entirety on the National Register of Historic Places in 1975. Curiously, it has a church standing at each of its four entrance routes. Herlock, a strong agricultural community, is also known for its rich railroad heritage and renovated train station. Secretary, which was once an active seaport community, maintains its charm in North Dorchester. And Church Creek, a community developed around the creek of the same name, is home to Old Trinity Church. This structure is the oldest Episcopal church in continuous use in the United States. Anna Ella Carroll, the unnamed general of the Civil War and the unrecognized cabinet member to Abe Lincoln, is buried in the church's picturesque cemetery. Cambridge and Dorchester County are home to many other attractions, including Brooks Barrel Company, manufacturer of slack cooperage. It's the only one in the state of Maryland, and tours are available by appointment. The Visitor Center at Sailwinds Park is the best place to start your tour of the county. Outside the center, you'll find everybody's play space, clean and comfortable restrooms, the Grand National Waterfowl Monument, gardens of native plants, and a boardwalk along the beautiful Choptank River. We hope that you enjoyed your stay here in Dorchester County and make plans to come back again and again. We hope that you do enjoy the heart of Chesapeake Country. My name is Maggie Briggs and I'm an outdoor recreation planner here at Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge, which is part of the Fish and Wildlife Service under the Department of Interior. Blackwater is one of the best places in Dorchester County to see a lot of different types of wildlife. The refuge has a visitor center, which has lots of exhibits. There is a wildlife drive that's approximately three and a half miles long. It is open every day from dawn until dusk. There are two hiking trails that are along the wildlife drive. One's about a third of a mile long, is wheelchair accessible. There are lots of different types of wildlife to see all year round. Blackwater is the best place on the eastern coast, north of Florida, to see nesting eagles. Last year we had approximately 89 young eagles hatched. There are 50 to 100 eagles here year round and almost any time of the year that you come to the refuge, you're more than likely to see an eagle. 